Hey there, my name is Christy. I'm the CEO and founder of DeSilva Life and a vetted ClickUp consultant. If you're new around here, our current top ranking video is five ClickUp dashboards that will change your business. Today's video, I want to just zoom in on one specific one. And now that it's been over a year since we've created that video, talk about some other features that you can add to your client dashboard. So I'm gonna go through how to build a client dashboard from scratch and totally blow your clients out of the water. So let's dive in. Let's go through how to create a client dashboard. So this is one of my favorite dashboards and totally, totally up levels your client experience. Especially when your clients aren't familiar with ClickUp, this just says, okay, here is every single thing you need and definitely can reduce the overwhelm. So let's go through the different blocks that are in here and how to create them and then a couple tips and tricks as well. So let me see if I can do this real quick. Okay, so some blocks you can have no name, which is I wanted to get rid of that. For some reason, it wasn't letting me delete it from there, so I just went into the widget settings, deleted it from here, and pressed save. So that's a tip for you if you're uh, having a little bit of a glitch. Okay, so wanna walk through what's on here and then we'll go through each widget individually. So a nice welcome batter, banner, a Loom video going through, this could be their dashboard or their dashboard and any project details, a welcome message, contact info and meetings, chat, documents and links, their project timeline and project deliverables. So this is just really great, not only to have all the information they need, but also to establish boundaries. So here's when we are online, here's who to contact and our response time, here's what is in the project. And if anything is outside of that, we can add an additional scope of work or things like that. Um, okay, so let's go into actually building this. I'm gonna open this up in a new tab and show you how we can build this from scratch. You could also um, add all different things that work for your process that you need as well. This is just kind of a point, an inspiration point to go off of. Okay, so I'm going to do client dashboard number two and then let's get into it. Okay, so first we're gonna add for that banner just a text block widget. So again, I um, deleted the name of that. Then you can click add widget and size this to be across the whole screen. Now in the description, I'm going to provide you with the sizing and these two examples. This is our old branding, this is our new branding. Obviously you're going to put your colors, fonts, and then add any other thing you want. Um, some people put pictures of themselves or their logo or their client. Make it fun, do whatever you want. I've seen some really awesome ideas from different people as well. And you can even look in these too. They have some cute banner ideas as well. Okay, so what you're gonna do is after you create your banner, click share, download as a PNG. Um, I did just like size two, it doesn't really matter. And then downloaded it to my bar down here. Once you do that, you can just drag and drop it into the uh, text block and then you can drag this up to the top. Okay, so now that is in there. If the if the size of your screen is kind of wonky, um, you can adjust the sizing on the banner as well, but this size is pretty much gonna be universal across like laptop and desktop. So that is that. Now the next one we have a video. So this is again, another text block and I just put watch me first. So put this in here, add the widget. I'm gonna shrink this a little bit and then put this Loom video in. So if you do add a Loom video and I'll open this up in a new page, grab this link. And then what you could do is paste this in here and then drag the sizing to be full width. So now here's a trick. As you're creating this, a lot of times if I'm like, okay, I have another text block, I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this, drag this further, change the name, welcome client name. And so these are things that in the onboarding checklist, I obviously make a note for 
myself or the team member who's onboarding the client to change the specific things in the dashboard, like this welcome message. Don't forget about the widget name. Um, and then also the name inside of the message as well. So hello, client name. I'm just going to copy and paste these in, but you can always pause this and get some inspiration from this welcome message make it your own, insert your personality, obviously your name, your service that you do for your business. Um, and then note, so when you share this with your client, it is view only, but what they can interact with is a chat and the buttons. So they're not going to be able to text it, like type in these blocks or anything. So that's why I wrote after completing the onboarding questionnaire, please let us know in the chat below. Um, so that's why I put that one. Then let's do contact info and meetings. So copy, add widget, text block, paste. You can also paste the text in there as you're creating the block. I typically just create the block and then size it and add it. There's no right or wrong way to do that. Um, so you can see the details I have in here. Working hours, contact info, our scheduled sessions. You can also feel free to get rid of our scheduled sections if you don't wanna add those manually. Let's add a chat widget. I like adding emojis too, I think it's fun, but again, totally preference. So pulled that up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate that one because it's the same exact size. Documents and links, so pro tip here as well. As you're adding these different blocks, make it visually pleasing. Add in some heading blocks, some buttons to kind of break up the text instead of just like bulleted lists. So here we uh, hovered over the text and made it heading three, made it highlighted uh, red, and then these are buttons. So you could see the uh, title, the link, and then the um, color and alignment. Now note, make sure as well in your onboarding process when you start documenting it and potentially handing this off to team members, you wanna make sure that you go through this and say, what is every single thing I have to switch on here? Like shared Google Drive folder isn't as obvious as, hey, client name, but it's still something that you're gonna to have to swap out to be custom to that client. So make sure you take note of that and put that in your process. Then we have the project timeline. So a couple things I wanna note about this. So this we pulled in from our project workflow mapping template from the client management bundle. So you can do a couple different things here. One, you can add a task list named your project timeline or project timeline. And then you can select the location, right? So here, um, clients, put that in there and then add the widget. So number one, um, if you wanna add the widget as a task list, they have to have access to that list in order to see it. So if you are adding them to this list to be a collaborator, say you want them to be the one that is able to see reviews, uh, chat back and forth in the comments, different stuff like that, um, then this is a great option for adding their dash, adding it to their dashboard, right? And then they'll, if they're shared to that list as a guest, they'll be able to see this in here. If they are not, and you're like, I don't actually want them involved in pressing buttons and seeing what's going on in the project, but I want them to be able to see what's going on. This is where you can create the client view, right? Decide what pieces you want on the outside and then embed it with a link. I'll get into that in one second, but I wanna show you one other thing first. So you'll see here, this one looks different than this because it's grouped by phase. So that's because whenever you add a list widget, a task list widget, it's always going to default to group by status. But instead here, we wanna make sure we group by the drop down phase. And so once I do that, you'll see that it looks exactly the same. Now another note here, you saw when I go into group by drop down, I have like a million and one categories. Um, this is because we have so many templates in our template space um, that may have drop downs named category. But this is something to note when you're creating dashboards is it's gonna ask you to pull in the exact custom fields 
And if I press to the wrong one, so I'll just show you category, it's not gonna group correctly. It's gonna say empty, because this custom field doesn't exist in that list and nothing is attached to it. So there are times when I've been creating dashboards that I've been like, okay, this is kind of crazy. I'm going through like 10 million in one like amounts or phases or whatever or categories and so if you want to avoid that what you could do is just pop into that list and then manage that drop down and rename this so it could be like project phase or project category so then it differentiates it from the other custom fields within your library and you're able to create that dashboard without having to test every single one so that's a pro tip for you. Okay, and then from here you can decide what else do I want them to see. Maybe I don't want them to see a assignee, so I'm gonna hide that, priority, but I do want them to see status, so I'm gonna bring that out on the outside, and then you can always adjust column widths as well. Um, okay, so now what about if they don't have access to this list? That's where you're going to create a client view if you want it to be separate from the regular view, and you are going to click um, sharing and permissions, toggle on this share with a public link, and then copy the public link. So now when I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this block, and I'm gonna add a custom embed block. So now I'm gonna say project timeline, add the calendar emoji, paste this link in here, and click add widget. And now no matter what, because this is a public list, they will be able to see this project. Um, so that's a hack for you. And then anytime you're embedding a list or a public view, it always updates in real time. So this is gonna be updating as the project is updating within the ClickUp list. And then one last block, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this over here, pull this down a little bit, and rename this one Project Deliverables. So again, take this dashboard as inspiration. Do you wanna put all these things on? Do you wanna put just a few of them? Um, are there things that you have to add because um, I don't have that in this example? Let me go ahead and move my head. Um, so take that into consideration, use this as inspiration, but this is a really great way to have a central, one central location, one hub for your client, totally elevate your client experience. And that's it for the client dashboard tutorial. So I hope that video was helpful for you in learning how to build a client dashboard in ClickUp, not only to keep everything organized and in one place, but also to really elevate your client experience. If this video is helpful, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And also don't forget to check out that five ClickUp dashboards that will change your business video. I go through four other really great examples of how to tangibly use ClickUp dashboards. And if you're brand new to ClickUp and you really want guidance guided step-by-step -step tutorials on every single bell and whistle, make sure to check out our System School ClickUp course. And we actually also have an entire template vault with 40 plus plug and play templates to just plug right into your ClickUp and get you started. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. So with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.